Today we're going to be reviewing the GB Pocket Plus, or uh, Cinderella's glass slipper of the stroller world, if you will. Before I get started, I just want to say we're not affiliated with any uh, stroller manufacturers. We do not sell strollers, we repair them. So this is an impartial review. Uh, okay, GB Pocket Plus, and of course the GB Pocket that was before it. Uh, at one time, the GB Pocket was the smallest folding stroller on the market. I'm not sure if it still is. I certainly don't know of any strollers that fold any smaller, so it might very well be so. Uh, it folds down to 20 by 32 by 38 centimeters. It's uh, very tiny when you fold it down. Uh, the weight is light as well. It's not uh, excessively so in relation to other strollers, uh, other travel strollers, but, uh, but it is light. It is lighter than the majority. Um, in this configuration, you can use it with a child from uh, six months and up because it has a seat, of course. You can actually put a bag, a bassinet on this stroller. I've seen pictures online of people doing that. I really, really would not recommend doing anything like that, uh, but you can do it. So GB Pocket uh, Plus. Uh, every part of me as a person who repairs strollers wants to criticize every aspect of this stroller. Uh, but I want to point out before I get down to all of the mechanical issues with this stroller, um, as a stroller, that in a way it's not really fair to criticize it uh, for any of the reasons that I'm going to criticize it. Because all of the choices in relation to the mechanisms and the materials involved in this are actually quite intelligent when the purpose of your stroller is to create the smallest folding, lightest carry stroller on the market. Um, so I am going to get down to the weaknesses of the stroller, of which it has quite a lot. It's one of the weakest strollers I've ever seen. But, uh, but again, when your purpose is to create something that folds so small, are these really weaknesses or are they simply results of the purpose of the design choice? And uh, that design choice, it does have a niche. It has a niche user group. It's a really, really tiny niche, but, uh, but it's a niche nonetheless. Okay, a few notes on comfort to start with. Uh, the seat is actually uh, decently sized in relation to other sorts of travel strollers. It is a little bit smaller. Uh, canopy is definitely smaller and there is no sun cover. Um, but overall, it's gonna work quite well with a child up to a year and a half maybe even two, but you're starting to push it in relation to size. Uh, it does have a sort of reclining feature. Uh, it's not very adjustable, but uh, you know, for a travel stroller for short periods of time, it's gonna work. If your child uh, wants to sleep, they can kind of sleep in that, uh, that reclined position and so on. As far as comfort for you, well, uh, the purpose of the stroller, the design of the stroller, the folding is also the, uh, the largest discomfort of the stroller itself. This thing is really, really complicated to fold down, really, really complicated to fold up. Um, of course, that's sort of what makes it cool, but at the same time, when you're trying to travel places and you want to fold it down, it's going to take a lot more time than uh, pretty much every other travel stroller on the market. Uh, in addition, while you're wheeling it around, of course, if you're in airports and malls, uh, which is really the only place you should be using the stroller, uh, it's going to feel okay and it'll get you from point A to point B, but uh, overall, it is a very rickety chassis. So especially these hinges up top, uh, lots of points on the stroller, it's gonna feel a little bit weak. Uh, it's another reason I would not recommend using it with, uh, with any sort of significant weight or larger child inside it. Okay, mechanics of this stroller. So, uh, just gonna kind of give kind of a general overview first. This stroller is made predominantly of plastic, which of course, a lot weaker than metal. It has a lot of hinges and a lot of trigger systems in order to activate those hinges. Uh, the combination of all of this means that there's a lot of points at which it can break and a lot of points at which it, it can loosen and thus, again, feel more rickety. Um, in the long run, if you don't really pay attention to how you're using this in relation to uh, weight and size, uh, you will eventually do damage to the stroller uh, and make it unusable. So overall construction, uh, in comparison with other strollers, again, uh, is that it is quite a weak construction. It's mostly plastic, far too many hinges, far too many trigger mechanisms uh, that can become defective or points at which it can loosen or break and uh, make the whole thing just uh, very unstable. In addition, it has this dual wheel setup, which, uh, which I know several like umbrella strollers use, McLaren and so on. Uh, you can lock the front wheels, which is necessary with the dual wheel strollers. What I noticed with the dual wheels on the front end is that when the axle starts to weaken, uh, the wheels kind of start to bend towards each other and they don't want to turn properly, uh, at which point you will need then to activate the, uh, 
the locking front wheel mechanism in order to keep it functional. Uh, I feel that the brakes are quite overdone on this stroller. Uh, when you have the dual wheel brake system and the axle weakens as it does in the front, uh, sometimes you don't get those teeth lining up with the, the pedal, uh, with the, the pin that goes down on the brake teeth on either side, activated by the pedal. Uh, so you can't have problems in that respect. You can additionally on this stroller have problems with the fact that it has a brake wire and it has no adjustment screw, uh, which means that over time that brake wire will shorten on the outside and then thus get weaker and you'll have trouble with locking or unlocking on the opposite side. Um, so those are kind of some specific weak points. But, uh, but again, overall, I think that the, the main problem from a structural point of view, from a longevity point of view, has to do with the weak plastic materials and the too many connection points and triggers. Again, I'd like to stress that uh, although they say you can use this with a uh, child up to 17 kilos, God forbid, I definitely do not recommend doing anything of the sort, not just because of the size of the child, but the weight. You know, it's one thing when uh, these mechanics uh, or engineers in their testing rooms are putting like 17 unmoving kilos in a stroller like this and say, yeah, look, it's structurally sound, you know, we've done the math and it's going to hold together. 17 unmoving kilos is very different from a four-year-old child in this who decides to start bucking back and forth because you don't buy them chips on your way to the next uh, terminal. You know, that's a big difference. So uh, please use it with smaller children. Avoid too much unnecessary bumps. Use it on smooth terrain, and, uh, and then it will function uh, to some extent for its extent intended purpose. Okay, I talked a lot about intended or uh, optimal use of this stroller so far in this review and that kind of gets me towards the end. So while this stroller is made with, uh, in comparison to other strollers, far too much plastic, far too many hinges, far too many triggers, it's far too rickety, uh, other strollers will not fold down so that they take up half a suitcase worth of space. The Baby Zed Yo-Yo will not fold down so that it fills half a suitcase. This one will. This one will fold down and leave you room for other things. And as long as you're going to use this stroller with a child up to say a year and a half, and you're only gonna use it to get from terminal A to terminal B in the airport, and then you're gonna take a taxi to the cool interior of some mall in Dubai or something, uh, then it's gonna work actually quite fine for you. Then you are Cinderella and this is your glass slipper. Because if you're that niche, then this stroller might be perfect for you. If you want something that folds down really small, is really cool in the way it folds, if it's kind of a style sort of a thing for you, and uh, you really only need it for getting on and off planes and taking in uh, smooth interior sort of places with a small child again, then this stroller works, works quite well. So again, I can't really say that the mechanical things I pointed out as defects are defects because they haven't used any materials that, that are inferior for that purpose of this stroller for which it seems to be designed. Um, yeah, that's, that's really all I can say. It's hard for me to really judge this stroller in relation to other strollers. It is such a niche sort of stroller. Uh, I think that if this had been the first stroller to fold down to uh, hand baggage size to carry onto planes, that it would be iconic. I think that uh, it would be iconic the way the Baby Zen is. Uh, unfortunately, it's not. They just wanted to make the smallest possible stroller after the Baby Zen already came out. Uh, and that kind of makes it an oddity. Uh, it's a cool oddity, but it's, uh, it's really just an oddity. Um, but again, if, uh, if the things I've said as positives or as uh, intended use for the stroller fit you, then by all means buy the GB Pocket Plus. It's, uh, it's got a decent price tag, I'll say that. Uh, it's cheaper than a lot of other travel strollers on the market, and it is unique. But uh, in any case, that's our review for the GB Pocket Plus. We hope that this uh, video has been interesting to you. If it has been, we ask that you subscribe as it helps us continue making videos in the future. Thank you.